Um, a cappuccino has, I work in a bunch of developing countries, all mainly in Africa, and a good cappuccino has become an indication of progress in the countries that I work in. This presentation is about my fourth and final visit to Juba, South Sudan. And uh, this is a picture of my last cappuccino. It was mighty good. I work, in, uh, I work mainly with property rights and working with rural communities. Um, my passion is really to implement cutting edge technology in some of the most dire and complicated environments and arid environments in the world. South Sudan has had two decades of civil war, some of the worst types. Um, when you think child soldiers, rape, murder, amputations, that's, that's the kind of environment we're working in. Thousands and thousands of people dead. In 2011, eventually a peace was brokered and South Sudan, the newest country in the world, was formed. I was working in 2011, I arrived on a, two, a, a US aid funded project um, which dealt with property rights and working with rural communities. I used iPad technology and that's uh, my colleague John Matata who's working really happy with, uh, with a device we implemented. The project was going incredibly well um, with over 4,000 parcels demarcated, owners getting access to property that they never had before. And then it all went wrong. <laughs> Dramatic pause for the next slide. I woke up to the sound of what sounded like the 4th of July on steroids. Um, no one knew what was going on. This is an actual picture of a, a presidential guard who arrived at a, the front, step, front doorstep of our hotel. He could tell us nothing. Um, there was gunfire all around us. Outside in the streets, there were huge tanks moving around. The situation was serious. Um, we laid, news eventually came through there was attempted coup going on um, and the president and the vice president who recently got fired uh, were fighting each other. In addition, there was rumors of ethnic cleansing. My first reaction was fearful. Um, um, just staying in a hotel full of expats, uh, we were a likely target to be next. Um, and it's just a thing of just kind of sitting back and saying, I'm in big trouble. In, in many senses, I had to step back and say, like, I need to think about this logically. I need to think about, like, what's going to go on here? This is a great picture of a brave soldier just going up there and doing it. Another dramatic pause. <laughs> so I've decided to put together this um, 10 tips. And um, you can read that. And it says, at, it says at the bottom, should you ever find yourself in the situation, which I hope is unlikely. And thank you to the Four Dummies series for lending me the image, although be it illegally. This message will self-destruct after this. Um, without any cell phones or radio, um, you actually, I actually had in access to internet because we have this VSAT system which it functions in most parts of Africa. I used Facebook and Twitter to communicate with people all around the world and got to know what was going on in my, in my situation. I made friends with people who work in war situations, who gave me a lot of valuable information. They were mercenaries, people who do this for a living. Easy to spot, they don't flinch in gunfire. And they will teach you many things about like being in this situation. Firstly, increased spatial awareness, increased situational awareness. Where to look, where the gunfire is, where it's coming on, and where to run, most importantly. Get up every two hours, check your situation, know where it's coming from, which locations there are, mark them down, and know where to run. Pack a go bag. This is just basic stuff. Uh, money, passports, and lots of water. Change of clothes and food if you have it. The situation is, if you have to run, if the hotel or walls get breached, you have something that you can survive with for at least a couple of hours. Have a sense of humor. Although it's a dire situation, it's, it's really good to keep lighthearted. I, uh, I used Facebook again to make some jokes, keep lighthearted, and the responses I got were just really comical. Um, I haven't included them here because of privacy reasons. but. <laughs> 
And fortunately, there is insurance that uh, you can get that will get you out of the situation. Mainly, insurance companies use, use contractors, military contractors, to get you out of a situation. You have to be on the list. I was, fortunately. That's my name highlighted. Um, they will leave people behind if they're not on there. You'll have to pay bribes. This is just the way it is. Going through an airport in a chaotic situation like this, you have to pay money. You have to be assertive. Don't flash them out and run money. You, often when you panic, you do. Um, only pay for the job when it's done. I, driving from the hotel to the airport, I saw images of war, mainly women and children, that I'll never forget. You cannot unsee these images. They'll be with me for the rest of my life. And then things go wrong even more. This is the actual picture that I took of a Boeing 747 crash landing on the only run runway in Juba as I stepped onto it, about to be evacuated on a smaller plane, closing off a quarter of the runway, making it impossible for other planes to be take off. Fortunately, our pilot was a maverick, and uh, he was able to get us out there on a shortened runway. This is a selfie of me at 10,000 feet on my way to Uganda, and just celebrating life, and knowing that, that, that thousands of people have actually died since I left, and the conflict is still carrying on today. Thank you.